was taking represented a government position. It was made abundantly clear uh, by then Speaker Jonathan Hunt uh, that when Ministers uh, were speaking in a capacity as a Member of Parliament, then they, they of course were not bound by that convention. Uh, for Mr Mallard to want to unturn order, no, the something that's established... The, members, no, the member won't criticise another member during a point of order. Uh, he'd done well to that point. And that's an interesting... I, I mean, I accept the, the, the points of order are well, well, uh, are well grounded and it's an interesting point that's been raised. But I stick with my ruling that were the Honourable Kate Wilkinson Associate Minister of Health, and I, and I don't believe she is then, uh, I, uh, I think the, the members... Uh, point of order being absolutely right because the minister would have some responsibility for what an associate minister has said. But where another minister acting as a local M in, in their capacity as a local member of parliament says something, I don't believe the portfolio minister, if the member, if the member was speaking within her portfolio area, again, that would be a different matter. But uh, I don't believe the minister is responsible and that's, that's why it's difficult for me, for, to, for me to pin a minister down with that kind of question because the minister is not responsible for what another a member says, especially when that other member is, is particularly when that other member is not a, an associate minister or any or any particular role like that. And we must move on. For the point of order, sorry. For the point of order, the Honourable uh, Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr. Speaker, then can I ask you to have a look at the general rules for authentication of questions, primary questions, because it's long been ruled that ministers can be asked whether they agree with particular statements not only said by members of parliament, by, pe by people outside of parliament. That speakers have, have uh, for as long as this parliament has been here, ruled that ministers can be asked whether they agree with things relating to their portfolio, no matter who made those statements. They are responsible for whether they agree, even if they're not responsible for the I statement the being made. I hear the member, and indeed he's, he's correct. But likewise, though, the speaker cannot, with that kind of question, the answer that's given can be range over a wide range. Again, I mean, I didn't rule out the member's question. He's perfectly entitled to answer it. But the specificity of the answer is always going to be constrained by the fact the minister has no responsibility for what someone else might think. And, and so the questions are allowed indeed. The member's absolutely right. But in terms of the speaker then insisting on any particular answer, I can't insist on any on any particular answer with that kind of question. It limits the value of that kind of question, and I think some members ought to reflect on that a little. So, sorry. Um, um, one, one, one last point, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I think, you've made, Trevor uh, I think you've made considerable progress away from addressing to answering questions in your time uh, as Speaker. This ruling that you have just made has effectively meant that you've gone back a long way and that ministers don't even have to address the question that was asked. I thank the member for his lecture. Uh, <laughs> but uh, rest of, I, I, I assure him that I shan't be letting ministers escape from sharp questions. Uh, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. It's been important. Sir, so I just want to take up with you two points you made and perhaps you may want to give it a, give it a considered ruling. The whole, it is a point of order, yes, that's why he allowed me to call you. Order, the member just came um, with his point of order. Mr. Mr. Speaker... Keep yeah. quiet, Mr. Speaker, the whole, th the whole thrust... I ask members, please, to respect the point of order process. The Honourable Clayton Costa. Sir, the whole thrust of the question centred around cuts to health. They then uh, gained further specificity as the supplementaries went on to an argument, if you will, between both sides, the Minister saying there were not cuts with the DHB uh, and our side claiming there were. The point that I made through you, sir, in the question was that a colleague of the Ministers, who I agree does not have responsibility for health but is a Minister in the Government, said, and I can table the quote, but you won't allow me to, sir, because it's a matter of public record, I accept that, made an absolute claim that the service was diminishing and that the DHB was being required to do more. Order, the member is now debating yes, the issue. No, 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 no the member will resume his seat. The member will resume his seat. And there will be no interjection on the matter, I say to the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. And I apologise to him if, I, if I am pinning the interjection on the wrong member. But, uh, no, I, the member is now getting into debate. Look, I've made it very clear that the, the, the Minister is not responsible for, for comments someone else might make. And with this kind of questioning, as the members acknowledge, there's, been, there's a difference of view as to where the cut's been made. The Minister's asserted cuts, min members have asserted cuts in their questions. The Minister has refuted those cuts. But when he then wants the Minister to comment or whether the Minister agrees with a, uh, the comment of a, 
of a minister that that minister is not responsible for. I can't, I can't require any specific answer from the minister with that kind of question. Ask the Prime Minister, it's a little different, because the Prime Minister is responsible for what all ministers say. But uh, a portfolio minister does not have responsibility for what other ministers say unless they're an associate minister. Question number, question number seven, uh, Su Sue Ketchley. Tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. A question for the Minister of Agriculture. Is he taking any action in response to...